Uh, beste luisteraars of kijkers in dit geval, we zitten hier met Nijn Belozero en dan in het naburige Huizen in uh, Arnhem. En aan tafel zit iedereen van de Nine Below Zero Band. En jawel, dan gaan we even doen. Brandon O'Neill, uh, Dennis Greaves, Gary McAvoy en Mark Veldhem. If I pronounce it. Yeah. Well, that was very good. Um, we um, arrived on the um, Eurostar, so very de-stressed. So we had a good morning. Nice and de-stressed. Come through on the Eurostar into Brussels. Went straight to the concert, big tent in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. Really, really, really good. And apparently 12 years, Jerry's been going. 17, 17 years it's been going. Um, and it was, they was up for it last night, it was good. Tonight it's going to be in Hussen, it's a small venue, but I, um, I heard uh, there are going to be a couple of hundred people, so you, yeah. they got a really good view of everybody on stage. Should Let's go there. We've been 30 uh, years on the road, with line below zero. Uh, it was 1979, the first album, live at the Marquis, and then live at the Buitenpoort in Hussen. Yes. It took a long road to, to long come road. here. <laughs> I mean, we are particular with the sound because I think the magic with, with the band is, is, is the whole band. So you've got to get uh, everybody to be heard, a nice balance. Um, and when there's an empty hall, it takes a bit of a time, a bit of a crash, crash bang wallop in there. So, just took a bit longer, didn't it, tonight? Yeah. Well, if the people can fill the, the room up, it, 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 it. Um, Your set list, how is the how is the range? It, it's a couple of covers, it's a couple of own songs. Which do you like the most to play? Um, our own songs, but the, I mean the covers. I mean, we, we, it's actually more. We do more of our own songs now than, than covers, that's, that's, uh, and that's nice. But it's, ni it's nice to throw some of, of our favourite songs in also. That's good. Um, not, not Brown Sugar, no. I, po I must apologise for anyone. I know. No, I didn't. I did a few bars. No, I'll tell you where we did it. We did it in Italy the other night. I really do apologise. But no, that geezer got up on stage with a Rolling Stones t-shirt on. So we did Brown Sugar and he didn't know the words. Is it possible that any, any, any of you shouts a song and you, you start to play it if you like to? You were up to it. It has been known. <laughs> yes, it has been, yes, obviously. But we, we, tend to, we tend to stick to the same batch of songs, dependent on how long the set list is. We have a two-hour show, don't we? We have a 75-minute uh, show or 90-minute show, show. So it depends on, on how long the show is going. Dennis normally calls the shot, so we all have to keep watching the back of his head. <laughs> and I have to guess, and we all have to guess where he's going. And quite often we get it right. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, look at the public. Um, you know, because often in a career, if you've had a set list down, um, things are not going to plan, you have to have the ability to change. Uh, and then um, we feel we have a formula and then within that formula we can change songs. Uh, at the moment we're in a real promotion of our own material um, with a few covers in and then that might change, you know, sometimes, you know, I think we even changed it a little bit last night, didn't we? Festival situation to regarding to a club situation will be different. Um, plus we've made how many records? 15? 15 records? So we've got a lot of music to find. A lot of choosing to be done. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, as the audience, um, do you want to blow the audience away at, at the end of your gig? Is then uh, are you satisfied then, or is the the technicality of the playing? If you're playing well, why well, yeah, I got a good evening? It's a, it's a mixture of all of those things. I think um, the main, the most important thing, I suppose, is for the audience to go away happy. But um, even though we've been doing it a long time, we we think we deserve a bit of contentment as well, a bit of happiness on stage. So that's why the sound checks take a long time. We have to try and get it as good for us on stage and then hopefully we will be able to pr pr um, portray what Nine Below Zero is all about and get a combination of audience and, and the uh, band for one big happy event. What are you doing now for your feeling? Oh, really good. Well, I was really down yesterday because we, we uh, <laughs> this is what happens, uh, we just come out of the studio with, an, with a brand new record and we just finally 
doing the mixing and getting the final nitty gritty finer details and you know yesterday things weren't good because uh, we thought certain orders of songs weren't right certain mixes are not right and then this morning you wake up you listen to it in a different light you make a few decisions so at the moment we're really happy we've got a new product got a 30th anniversary uh, playing great playing some great festivals this year and um, you know, it's good. 30 years has gone like that. Was in the future, not in the past? Yeah, very important, very important. I mean, people who have been in, in the business as long as we have, and, um, you know, the morning you get up and it's not exciting and fresh and you don't want to do it, you know, stop. But uh, at the moment, we're, we're finding it still a challenge, still exciting. You know, we're, we're flying out to Dubai next week. Um, that's a new new challenge and, and something exciting for us. Um, we've just been to Italy last week, we were in Holland. We don't get to Holland enough. Um, we, we often talk about that, but we won't go into that. But we would like to come here more often because the, the public like us. But for some reason we can't get here enough. As I say, it's another subject but uh, another for another day. All um, own written songs? Who is the the main influence to now? Who's coming at the morning? I got a good I got a good a good tell song. You play him in the memo. Yeah, you just make him up, didn't you? Make him up, put him in there, and then take him to the boys. See what happens. And uh, the song, the lyrics, also. The lyrics is nice to bounce off of a few people, really. You know. Uh, depends. I mean, if you're really, really inspired, you'll do everything yourself. And then sometimes you need to bounce ideas off of a few guys, you know, um, because it's, it's quite interesting. Um. I'm going to round up this interview because we have to go and you have probably to have some cleaning up to do and eating before you go on stage. But no, we're going to do another sound check. <laughs> Very Very <laughs> but if we have a, a same conversation like this over 10 years and I was still around for the radio or television and you were still around on the stages, um, how many CDs do you have and what is the only country you never played in here you surely want to play in? God, where do you want to play? I fancy... Um, South America. South America, South America we haven't been. Have Recently, though. <laughs> no, I, I did um, oh, Venezuela and Mexico, played there, but okay. very, very good. I think it would be good to go down there. And we've done most of the Eastern Bloc, but we haven't done uh, Romania. I'm not so sure that would be a good place to play, but um, we haven't done collectively uh, the United... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, or, or even Russia, have we? Well, you're in the neighbourhood in Dubai. Well, yeah, we we'll flew over. Yeah. We, we flew over Baghdad last week. I remember looking down and going, "Woo!" That's well, um, it's an Islamic state. I, I don't know if there is any beer or any whiskey or scotch or anything. Don't worry, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. No, 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 no. I mean, I'd like to go to Mali in um, in, in in Africa. Uh, I think there's a great scene there, a music scene there. Cuba always fascinates me. Venezuela, Peru. Israel, I'd like to go. With you. Yeah, thanks very much, Mike. Doesn't uh, doesn't and if there is a good music scene there, does it inspire you to uh, yeah. to make something else of yeah. whatever you're doing? Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, one uh, thing on on the on the on the on the um, roster would be we've always wanted to do it. We always talk about it, but would be to do a world blues album where we get in a few artists from Salem, Marley. Um, with their wonderful instruments, and we come in and we we write a song, um, and then someone from you know another country or um, would be. F I'd love to do that. I, I think you should should do that because I had a, I heard a few African musicians in blues and they were awesome, and they, they take their own native instruments and make a bluesy sound of it, and and, and it's totally different. The origins, isn't it? And the slave trade, and you know, yeah. Yeah. European and African. Yeah. Okay, we're going to round up this uh, small interview. We're going to make it for... Uh